Hi, Malika. Welcome to the channel. We're going to get into how it took a literal supernatural event for you to get saved in a little bit. But before we do, I want us to go back to life before you got saved. Okay, let's go. All right, so what was your life like? Did you have faith in anything at all? I did. I was born Muslim. I mean, from just the early ages of my life. I mean, when we start school, we normally, after school, we'll go to Muslim school. And that's where we'll learn. We learn about Allah. We learn about the Quran. And then, yeah, it, it's, it didn't take long from the age of six for me to kind of feel different. I felt that maybe there was, you know, something else. Maybe there was a, a different God. I don't know. It was just a, a crazy feeling at that age. And I removed myself, you know, with my parents' permission to not go to Muslim school after a while because asking questions was never okay. So I was always this lost person just needing to know more things. But I, it was, it was just never okay to question the Quran or question this. And, you know, it's, it's, it's frowned upon. I'm not sure how it is now, but back then it's like, you know, you don't question the Quran or if you have a weird feeling about something, you, you you know, it's like it's a wrong thing to feel that way. And I eventually didn't go anymore. And I guess this feeling of maybe there's something else or maybe there's another God just stuck with me. And as I grew older, it became worse. It became so much worse than, you know, from being a child it was a horrible time for me um as a as a you know teenager to young adult it was just a horrible time firstly because i really really needed a god and then secondly i was so fearful for dying and ending up in hell or jahannam like we will call it in islam but it was one of those things where I needed to kind of get myself to a point to kind of be okay just to love because it wasn't okay for me anymore just to be a normal person to love. I was always filled with massive anxiety. I had fear of dying and this fear of dying and going to hell got worse as I got older. And the more I'm pushing on to come to a point of, but maybe, maybe there is another God, you know? Maybe I'm believing wrong. Maybe all of these things are, are just be what people make up. And I'm just going about my life like that. And it became a horrific story of the dreams that I used to get of, of dying and people chasing me and small little demons holding my hand and laughing at me while I'm sleeping. It became something that it's horrible to say, but I kind of got used to it. I got used to the fact that at night, this was going to happen. It was like a torment at night where I didn't know what to do. I'll be sweating. I'll be, I'll be terrified. I'll literally shake of, of the fear that would come over me. And the moment I would just want to sleep, that fear would come. And it's like, you know, you're going to die. You're going to die. And I was like, oh my goodness, it, it's, it feels now like, you know, now I know what it was and, 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 and how I could have handled it. But then I didn't know. And it just was a scary, old scary ordeal. I was, I was always fearful up to a point where I'm just even terrified of just people. So, yeah, that was, that was me growing up. It was a horrible experience. And the more I'm pushing in, to know that, okay, there might be a God. Let's just keep on going. The more I'm pressing in, the more these dreams and this anxiety and the fear would come over me. So eventually I'm just a scared person. And and I would even, when I, like, you know, speak to close friends, I'll just be like, I am just terrified. I don't know. I'm terrified of many things. Like, I'm just, I'm just scared. Even just the thought of death is t terrifying me. Because I know from how I've been acting and of things I've said, questioning the Quran, not believing certain portions of it. I knew for a fact that's going to send me straight to hell. And 
that day was something that I, I, it was just hard to live with. And, you know, in Islam, it's like you need to come forth and you need to, you know, cry it out. You need to ask for forgiveness and hopefully you get forgiven. You know, it's, it's just one of those things where it was all up to me, you know, for the forgiveness. It was me becoming this perfect person to lay down and just say I'm sorry. And I've tried all of that and it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't take the dreams away. Just worse because this time my child was included in the dreams. My child would get killed. Things like that. So it got 10 times worse being a parent. And then I would push on and carry on until one day I said, I'm done. Until I I was in my late 20s and I was like, you know what? I have now this for my whole life. This has become part of my whole entire life and I cannot do this anymore. So you finally reached the point where you had to make a decision on what you're going to do to really fix your situation. Now, before we move forward, I want to kind of talk about growing up Islam. You said there was something about it that made you say, this isn't for me. What made you doubtful of that faith that you had growing up? Was it the strictness of the religion that made you doubtful? What would you say it was? There was one incident when it started. So my cousin, you know, it was going to Muslim school and things like that. And and we would often go together and things like that. And it started when she couldn't go because she was on a period that day. And then I was like, okay. So in Muslim school, I started to question, you know, it's called the Mu'alima. She's a teacher. So I'm starting to question her regarding when we get our period. And the way she said it that day was like, you know, I was I was ready to just leave because it was like, okay, so you're unclean. So you can't touch the Quran and you can't make salah. So, you know, girls don't generally just come to madrasa when they aren't because there's nothing really for them to do. So you are classified unclean. And I was like, but why Allah love us so much and he's so merciful why would he classify me as an unclean person? I mean, he's given me, didn't he give me the ability to to have children and I bleed and things like that. So this makes me unclean. So in this time, when I am on my, on my period, I'm not able to read, to be close with him because I can't get close to him in that sense because I'm unclean. And I think at that moment, it was like, okay, this is starting to affect me. And I don't think my family thought much of this. Also because I asked some of them questions, you know, but we are all raised in that way of you don't know, question like that. So for me, it was just like, if I'm unclean, then why would he even treat me like that? You know, if he loves me, if he is our heavenly father, if he's our God and he created me, why would he ever say that I am unclean or why would he classify me like that? And that was one one of the incidents where I was like, this is probably, this is not good. Because when I eventually started my period, I was just like, so he thinks I'm dirty now. You know, he thinks I'm unclean. So I'm just not going to bother. I'm not going to bother with him nothing. Because if he can't accept me being unclean, then he can't, ex- then he mustn't accept me being clean. And then I would ask for forgiveness and push on and push on in the religion and push on in Islam. But then it just does, it doesn't feel right. It's just like I'm sitting there and doing nothing. So it's extremely condemned religion. Mm-hmm. You constantly under a massive cloud of condemnation. Right. And even though you ask God for forgiveness, you don't feel okay after that. Still, you still under this massive cloud of condemnation the only way that you as a muslim can say you feel much better because you know you are forgiven is if you do your deeds to the t if you do all your good deeds and you are this perfect person and you are you know you're making your salahs five times a day and you're reciting the quran and you're doing all of these things and you're going to make at least once in your lifetime and you're doing all these things and still it's i think with most 
it's a mental thing. So they will tell themselves, you know, and I'm forgiven to make themselves feel better. But from, you know, Muslims I know, and from my own experience, you don't feel okay because you just don't know if you're forgiven. So well, the only time you'll know is when you eventually die. Right. So that wasn't okay for me either because I didn't want to know and, you know, get the shock of my life when I do die, which I obviously thought that, it's going to be like that because there's this punishment of the grave that they also talk about and things like that. And all these things just horrified me, even just as a kid. It's just scary. Say from my early 20s in my to my late 20s kind of thing, I still had much doubt, but I was still, I said I wasn't going to seek Allah anymore. I was going to seek the truth. Because since I was a Muslim then, I was like, okay, so I just want the truth. So for me, at this point, as I wanted the truth. And I would pray to Allah and I would ask him, like, show me the truth. Show me you. Show me you. Because I'm in doubt here. Like, I'm not okay. I'm doubting. I am losing you completely. So I need you to show me the truth. Because in my journey or in my life, I didn't want to seek Jesus, to be quite honest. I didn't want to find Jesus Christ. I wanted to find Allah. I wanted to find him because that's who I knew as God. And I wanted to praise him and seek him. And I wanted him to show me the truth because I was just in a very bad space. For me, it's like I needed to see him. I needed to understand what this word says in the Quran. I needed to, I needed Allah to come forth. I see. And he did it. In your own words, you felt unworthy, unaccepted, and condemned as a Muslim. And all along, throughout this time, you still felt like you wanted to find Allah or get closer to Him. But Allah is all you knew. You didn't know of Jesus Christ. You didn't know of God, as you said. But in your time of seeking Him out, something supernatural took place, didn't it? It did. It did. And this point, this is from you know, my early teens to in my late 20s, where I've pushed on, pressed on, show me you, show me you, Allah. Let me know that you are real. Let me know that, you know, all of this stuff that's happening to me is for some reason. You know, let it be for some good reason. I don't know what it's for. I don't know why I'm being horribly tormented at night. And it's just at night. You know, show me you so this can stop. All I needed was... Because in Islam, from what I know now, in Islam, we are not taught like we are in Christianity when it comes to, you know, the supernatural realm, your enemies, you know, um, how you can be attacked, what oppression means, what it means when you are in bondage. It, It doesn't teach you like Christianity does. So for me, all I knew is like, I'm probably being punished by Allah for questioning the Quran and he's sending all these little demons at night to hold my hand in dreams while I'm sleeping and they are all laughing at me for some reason and they don't want to leave me alone and then next thing you know snakes get thrown over me next thing you know I'm being chased by a whole community of people and they all are stabbing me with a knife and I could literally feel the blood coming out of my body I mean waking up from these things I could wake up shivering most mornings. I would shiver out of fear of the dreams. And I thought, okay, he's punishing me. And then I just keep pushing in and saying, I'm sorry for questioning if he can just show himself to me. And so that I can, I don't know, I don't know, be better. I don't know, be perfect. And I don't know, but I just needed help. And, and I didn't know, I didn't think anyone can help me. And this is things I kept to myself because there's no teachings like on these things. It's just a bad dream. So you get over it. That's how, you know, we. I'm brought up. Like, it's not like anyone's going to do anything if I say, sure, I had a dream and people are chasing me and demons are holding my hand. They'll be like, you know what? It's a bad dream. Just like say some surahs and, and you'll be okay. But I gave up. I eventually decided I'm going to give up on, on God. I remember I was working quite close to home then and I decided just to take a walk from work. It was like a 40-minute walk. And in that 40 minutes, I literally broke it off. It was a breakup session. I broke it off with Allah and whoever else. I just broke it off. 
and I did that and I and I walked home and I said, this has been a part of my whole life now. All I am is a scared human being. I'm scared to sleep at night. I don't want to sleep at night because I don't know what I did to you, but this I can't go on any longer than this. This is affecting me so bad. And my spirit was telling me that, you know what I need? I just want a God. I just want a spiritual life, but this is not working. The only thing I can do is to give up. I mean, I wasn't looking at other religions and stuff. I was just going to become an atheist. I was just like, you know what? I'm I'm done. I walked home and I and I declared it. I said, this from this moment on, I'm an atheist. I am done. I am done terrified i'm going to hell it's fine it's okay if you want to send me i'm done i i can't do this anymore because this has became such a horrible part of life life became just you know just this whole scary place that i i didn't know what to do in i wasn't okay i mean it it was just i wanted something so badly i wanted a spiritual life i wanted a god i wanted to pray i wanted to do all these things but somehow i'm failing at it because all these dreams and things just made me want to stop wow so, you know it's it's a horrible feeling and i couldn't anymore i guess i had to make that decision kind of for myself like i i'm choosing to be okay i don't know i'm going to believe in no one but i'm going to be okay i guess I don't know. That was the thought that was going through my mind because I didn't know what to do. I knew one God and I'm trying to rely on him and I'm trying to depend on him and I'm trying to get his help here in my situation but there was nothing for many years and then I said I'm done. I'm going to be, become an atheist. Wow. So it seems as if you were looking for a law and you desired like you wanted him to take away these nightmares you were reaching out praying calling on his name just to take away these dreams these terrible dreams that you were having at night but he wasn't answering it but you felt like there was something deeper to it it seems as if living that kind of life night after night really took its toll because eventually you became an atheist but you didn't remain an atheist for long, did you? No, 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 no. I, I, it was just, it was just for one day. <laughs> yeah. So that day, walking home, I declared, "I'm an atheist. I no longer believe in you. I'm done. I will now, you know, find what atheists do, and then I will just follow suit because that I'm done." So that night, I went home. Went on about my night, did everything I needed to do, went to bed. And that night, Jesus Christ came into my dream. Wow. When he came into my dream, in the dream, I was well aware of what's happening. I was well aware. So he stood, he stood in front of me and he, his arms was open and he said, Malika, come. And, and he said that over and over and over again. And every yeah. time he said that was the first time I heard it. I don't know if it makes sense. But it, I heard it over and over in my head. But every time he said it was the first time that I actually heard him say it. So he, was, so he said, Malika, come and his arms was open wide and he was, he was light. He was, he was just everything that I could never have ever imagined. And I stood there, well aware, very conscious, and mountains was falling off from me. I felt everything is falling off my shoulders. Like every worry I had, every, every dream I had, everything was falling off from me. I could literally feel it. That is amazing. Yeah, he just stood in front of me and he, I wanted to so bad you know, ask a couple of questions because now I'm confused as to, hey, who are you? So so I so badly wanted to ask a couple of questions, but I couldn't. Even though I was very conscious in mind, I couldn't even speak because of the awe, of the awe and the glory that Jesus Christ comes with. Oh, my goodness. It, it's, it's, you can't say a word because... All that is in front of you is all that you need. 
That so, is so, amazing. Yeah, and uh, you know, that night was a weird night because it lasted so long. I felt like I was in the dream for a good year. Like the, the dream felt forever. When I woke up that morning, there was two things that was playing on my mind. Was that was Jesus Christ. For some reason, I knew it was Jesus. I knew it was him. I just, I don't know how, but I just knew that that's Jesus Christ. I didn't even think of, oh, Allah came to me. I didn't think like that. All I knew was, oh my word, that was Jesus Christ. The second thought that went through my mind is, oh my word, he knew my name. He he knew me. He, he knew my name. I, I got up and I rushed to work because I was partially late. And my my colleagues was like, why you look like this today? Like, you, you look like you've seen a ghost. I was like, you know, that. for me at that moment was beautiful. I, I could feel that something shifted in my life, but I was a little bit scared for, you know, I know that's Jesus. So I know what's going to happen now. I'm going to leave Islam. I can lose family and all these things. So that, that part there was a little bit scary for me. But what I've experienced, just in that dream, saying nothing, all he said was, Malika, come. That's all that I literally needed to know that, you know what, I'm actually okay. I don't feel like I felt yesterday. Something's shifting in me. And I mean, I'm talking to Jesus now. I'm like, hey, Jesus, I know that was you. Like, I don't know how to pray to you, but I know that was you. So please, can you show me things and help me? Because I, I don't know. I don't know what to do from this point. And I would get sudden urges to just go into a place and pray. Like just go into a place and, and speak to him. And it was a weird feeling as well because I I should get up and go find a, a quiet spot at work and just sit there for a couple of minutes and pray. But I have a conversation because I didn't know what to say. I was just like, I know that was you. So so what do you, what must I do now? Like, can you, can you show me things? I need you to help me. I need you to, can you take away these dreams? Can you do all these things for me? Because I don't know where I am. Like, I don't know what's happening right now. And then it did. And then yeah. I never got a dream like that again. That dreams was gone. It was gone. That's the power of God. Yeah. Let me, oh, let me tell you, girl, from the dreams, from the fear from anxiety was just all gone. I remember one day sitting, my life got a little bit busy because now I have a newfound Jesus. So so I'm 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 focusing and I'm and I'm reading on him and I'm reading the Bible and I'm and I'm enjoying this and I feel so much love and I I know I'm gonna be okay, you know? So it was a it was a good time for me. And then I realized my stomach is not in a knot anymore. Like the anxiety that's gone too. Like everything is just gone. It's not like the that fear. It came again, you know, after a while. It tried to come again because I went to bed one night and it just, I had this terrible feeling again. So I kind of am aware of the feeling because I've experienced it for so long. So it came again. But just this time it was different because this time I knew Jesus. And I, you know, read the Bible and I got to know Jesus Christ. And I built this, you know, relationship with him and just this close person to my heart. And I got up from my bed and I said, not today. I don't think you, I don't think you understand why I am now. Like, you need to leave. I'm not afraid of you. Like, you need to go. Wherever you are, you just need to leave me alone right now. And I was declaring scripture. I was saying every verse that could come to my head that night, I said it and it left and it was yeah. gone and it came back. Awesome. Okay, so what this looks like is that it seems that immediately when you met Jesus in your dream, it's like he transformed you into a new person because you said your fears were gone. Even the nightmares you had for like years that Allah never took away, Jesus immediately took it away. And you know what's cool is what Jesus does once you invite him into your life, he changes things, doesn't he? He, he truly does. He truly does. It was the most exhilarating feeling ever because I was now understanding that I was exposed to 
a spiritual realm, you know, that I didn't know about. All I wanted to do was to seek Allah and, you know, to, to get to him. But then the truth comes. And that's why I was in this position to be like, you know, one. I'm looking for the truth, but I know it's Allah, you know, I, I know it's him because he's all I know. And I know it's him, but you, you just need to give me some sign. You know, I didn't want much, just a, just a sign. But then when Jesus comes, I realized that for me seeking and pressing on to the truth, the truth will come. And that truth is always going to be Jesus Christ. No matter what situation we are in or what religion we are in, or if we have slipped away from Jesus, he will come for us. He'll come for you. He'll come for me because that is who he is. He's a loving God and we know we are in him. When we reach the conclusion like that, but you know what, like I did. And, and I mean, I had lots of quiet moments where I needed to reevaluate. I could ask him questions and it will be downloaded into my heart and I will know, okay, I know what to do. And I, I know, you know, where to read in the Bible. The Bible is filled with so much wisdom and, you know, what an amazing life book that we have. And when I read the Bible the first time, you know, I was just scrolling through the pages. And when I came to the verse that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I know there's plenty of other beautiful verses, but that verse there, stood out for me so much because of what I've gone through in my life, stood out for me so much that I can only now in my life, I can only depend on Jesus Christ. There is no other God that's going to tell me I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. So I will never leave you in this mess that you are in or in this situation that you are in. And it was that seeking and that pushing on sometimes we don't even know what we are seeking but the truth will come if we just constantly press in and stay tuned to you know what there is something else I can feel it in my spirit there's something bigger this can't be it for me like really I was created to be tormented this can't this can't be like I, I just couldn't that that feeling just couldn't sit with me and as much as I pressed into it when Jesus finally came, I knew that I was going to be okay. I knew that there's absolutely no way Jesus Christ is sending me to hell. But the way I thought in Islam, you know, or even just questioning the Quran, those kind of things, you know, it's, it's, it's not good in Islam. So for me, it's like Jesus, he, he came, he showed himself to me. He said, I must, you know, I must come. I must come and follow him. So that was that was a life changing moment that I still think about to this day. That I still picture that you know all of him in my mind when I feel you know like I'm becoming a bit lazy or something is stressing me out or I feel worried or something. I would always get back onto that dream, think about it again, because that dream was very conscious. I was very conscious about it. So I remember the dream. And just to know that he's watching me, he's watching over me. He knows me. He knows who I am. He knows my name. He's my God. So I focus and I put my attention completely to him again. And then I'm back on my feet again, because we are built on solid rock. And now I'm like, oh, I missed out on all these good things in my in my life. But it's okay. I got it now. It's an amazing feeling and a testimony I will definitely never take for granted. Because I know that when we push on and push in, he shows himself. He makes a way and he takes away everything. You know, the torment. I don't know what those dreams are about. Like, I mean... But he took it all away. He took it all away from me. And yeah, you know, his power, no enemy can withstand. So anything that was bugging me that I maybe, or I didn't know it was, you know, it could be a demon. I didn't know. I just thought that I'm losing my mind, you know, but I didn't think it's like, this is a demon and I'm being oppressed here. And this is, I didn't think like that because I didn't know all I know now. But what I do for sure know is, and how I don't stand in fear anymore, being fearful or anxious, is because I know who's, I know who's looking out for me.
I know will come for me over and over again. Because yeah. he's our God. He's he's God. He's our Father in heaven. You know, it's it's one of those things that it has to change you. You know, you can't be the same person after you encounter Jesus Christ. There's just no way. Yes, you know, it takes a while for you to, you know, figuring out reading, praying. And I mean, even when I just ask like, okay, so how do I pray to you? And it just comes so fast. The answer came like, you know, so fast. Like, just speak to me. You know, just speak to me. I would sit and say, hi, Jesus. Um, you know, <laughs> because I didn't know how to approach this thing. I didn't know how to, you know, should I go cleanse myself first? Because in Islam, we, we take wudu. So I was like, should I cleanse myself first? Or should I, you know, I have something on my head. Do I need to change my clothes? Or, or what? And Jesus was like, no, just as you are, you speak to me. You speak mm-hmm. to me, I will listen. And yeah, it, it became this awesome, you know, relationship that I now I would go in. And obviously it's it's not, I haven't reached my peak. I don't think we will ever reach our peak. We just need to carry on pressing on into the relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. It's the most, it's the highlight of my life. That is awesome. He, he saved my life. I don't know what would have happened if he didn't come. I, I don't know. And I don't even want to think about it because I was losing my mind. Mm. But he saved my life and he came at the right time. Yes. I would, I would say that although it, I went through it for so long, he knew that I was just looking for him. I just didn't know it. He knew that I was looking for him. I just couldn't think about things like that. Oh, Jesus is my God. But it's been an amazing experience, you know, just getting to know Jesus more every single day of my life since I met him. And it won't change, eh? I'm so joyful just knowing who my God is. And I feel for my family or, you know, Muslims because they don't have the joy that we have. They can't experience this because firstly, they can't fathom that. <laughs> they can't even think about feeling this way because what they know is what they know and how they you know go through the salahs and how they ask for forgiveness and things like that but like what we know when we convert you know it's like like I've been missing out on this my whole life but I'm grateful I'm so grateful that he came for me he surely comes with his lost sheep and he's continuing to do it he's not stopping there's lots of Muslims that has a very similar-ish testimony. And it starts when your spirit just feels off about something. When I, you know, watch the testimonies of, of Muslims, one of my friends, she also converted to Christianity after also experiencing a dream. And the thing is, it's one of those things where it's very similar. You know, our stories are very similar where it first starts with something don't sit right with you. And then you seek and you and you seek. And then you find, but just, you won't find what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You'll find Jesus Christ. He will be the one that you'll find because w- no one else is going to come. It's going to be Jesus Christ who's going to come. So yeah, that's, that's me. It's been an amazing journey with Jesus. I like the revelations um, that you just gave us right there. They're all great. And you know what I also like that you said? that you reference you go back to that dream that you had with Jesus and it just gives you like hope again when you need it so that is a really cool thing that you get to look back on whenever you need to you also noted stated that the morning after you had this dream of Jesus appearing to you you went to work and your friends even noticed they're like something's different about you yeah <laughs> i was trying to get myself to a i don't know i was con- confused scared and happy and joyful i had all the emotions but yeah they they've noticed and i, I was just nervous about you know i know that was jesus mm-hmm. but there's only there's only so much i can only keep it to myself for so long well not really to myself you know there's a few people that knows but like you know making it public who are the people that do know you know some uh church members some of my friends 
my parents. But uh, I'm speaking about like, you know, the rest of my family, you gotcha. know, like some aunts and uncles and things like that. They don't know. Or they might. I don't know. I don't know. They might and then didn't say anything. And then I don't know. But it was very important for me to listen to God's word because sometimes we think God, he doesn't speak to us and things, but we need to listen. You know, we need to press into God and we need to wait for the right moment. So when I accepted Christ, my mom and I always had an awesome relationship. For some reason, it was not time to tell her. I just felt it in my spirit because I prayed about it and it it was not time. And then when she came to me, that one day, and then God said, this is the time now. And I couldn't hold it anymore. And the moment she came in, I was just like, okay, so mommy, this is my situation. This is who I am now. And yes, she was upset, but she came around also because I prayed. I said, Lord, please just help her heart, help her heart understand. So she came back and she brought me some Bible cards, which I was so excited for. And I told my dad as well. And my my dad, he kind of saw this coming um, with me since I was a child because of, of the questions I would ask and how I would just be very sad afterwards because I, I don't feel like I have enough to for faith. I don't I don't have that enough to to stand firm in 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 my religion and what I believe in. Because I'm looking for something that's going to be like, okay, so this is what you have here. And then you believe in this, have this faith. You know, I needed Allah to do that for me, but he didn't. So obviously the faith then deteriorated from there and then left me completely. But it's one of those things where we always need to keep pressing on and pressing into Jesus Christ. Because my initial thought was, that Christians in general receive or get these dreams from Jesus because they're Christians. But I then learned that, you know what, some Christians, they didn't get this dream. So I was like, okay, so he came for me. He truly did come for me so I can be part of him. It's this pressing on into Jesus. It's this continuous building relationship with Jesus that changes us because, man, what a, what a journey it has been. I mean, I haven't spoke about my testimony in a, in a while. And now thinking back, I'm so, today I I feel like I just received him in my life again. Because <laughs> it's bringing back so much of joy from what I felt and how I know that he changed me. And, you know, sometimes I'll say like, Lord, you answered me so fast when I asked you these questions. When I just met you, why am I waiting now forever? You know, but it's the things that we need to wait. As long as I know that he's there, he's watching. All I need to know is that it's Jesus's time. It's God's time. It's not my time. So that's why, you know, even sharing my testimony, even with you today on this um, podcast, isn't even just this. It means so much to me because this was the moment that I was thinking I should maybe put it on social media, make a video. And it wasn't the time. And God said, no, it's not the time yet. As Christians and followers of Jesus Christ, we lose that patience. And sometimes when we have a testimony, yes, it's awesome to share it. I'm not saying we mustn't. It's awesome to share it. But when we come out to the public and do something like I'm doing now, then we need to pray about it, you know, fast yeah. about it. We need to make sure that, okay, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this where you want me to do it? We just need to pray about it and and wait and I mean this my testimony or my dream of Jesus Christ happened in 2016 I still haven't posted a a, a video Mm -hmm. I still I shared it with some people but I still haven't posted anything or even done anything like this because it wasn't the time now Jesus Christ says you know what now is the time now is the time to do it and that's why I was like out of the blue I was like hey hey mercy we can we can do that now because Jesus has shifted my life now. So this was the perfect time if I should thought about it myself. But God said, this is the time. So that's why I reached out to you and be like, you know what? Let's do this. Well, thank you. Thank you for reaching out. (laughs) No, you're welcome. I, I, it was, it was time. And I've, I've gone so used to how God speaks to me because I remember being like, okay, Jesus. So what do I do now? Since I know you, since I saw you. What do I do now? And I've gotten so used to just hearing his voice. 
but not an audible. It just gets kind of downloaded into your spirit. And then you kind of just know, okay, God wants me to do this. So yeah. it's a thing that we must discern. But we will know, you know, once you press into God and you are, and you have this relationship with him, we'll know that, okay, he wants me to do this. God wants me to do this. So, yeah, that's why we are here today. And I thank God for you. I thank God for your platform. I pray that it gets increased. You know, thank that, you. That even if it reaches, you know, one person, it's one person that will have faith or have mm-hmm. hope. And even not just for Muslims, even for Christians that feels, you know, that God is not listening to them. Mm-hmm. God is leaving them in this situation, things like that. It's not that God is leaving us in our situation. It's that in our situation, we need to press on to something. We need to know in our spirit, what truth am I looking for? I mean, I now couldn't seek Jesus Christ, but I did seek the truth. I did seek the truth. I just want the truth. I want to know who God is. I want to know if it's real. I want to know if all this is real. It's just one of those things. So when we even feel like that as Christians, we just need to keep pushing on to to Jesus and make sure that we know who we are in Christ and that Christ will come. He will come for us in whatever situation we are in. He will change everything around and take everything away from you, like dreams and people even that messes up your life, that want to come and destroy you. Mm-hmm. He is our God and he sees us. And the cool thing is that I was like, oh, he knows my name. Like, Jesus knows me, my name. Like, it was a, it was a thing. I probably took like that the whole day, the next day to just cross that, he, that Jesus knows my name. He knows who I am. So that is the thing. He knows us. And it's an amazing feeling that we can keep on pushing on, even if times get tough, that we can just go back and say, you know what? I know a God who actually knows my name that came for me before I became an atheist. A day before I was going to become an atheist, he came for me. Isn't that wonderful? I also feel that, you know, God was like, okay, you know what? It's, it's, It's kind of long for her now. And now she's giving up. Let me get her. Yeah, this is this is the time, you know, you've given such encouraging words there. I love everything that you said there. It's definitely encouraging. And, you know, what I like about your salvation story is that it proves the great lengths Jesus will go to just to get his lost sheep, you know, like it's written in the Bible. One thing I did notice is that there's only a few people who in your life who know that you are actually a Christian would you say there's a fear if you switch from the Muslim faith to the Christian faith you know to be quite honest I think it's a me feeling I think my family would still love me I think my family would still speak to me I don't want to hurt them you know I don't want to hurt people in general I didn't want my story to hurt them but then I was thinking but what if my story can encourage them What if my story can show them that, you know what, like these things happen. They just don't know it, but things happen. I mean, now my mom, she's so Muslim, but we, when we speak, I give her godly wisdom, you know, what I know of the Bible. I would often say, mommy, I've read in the Bible, it says this, that, that, that. So I would kind of give her that encouragement, even though she maybe won't look at it the way I do or accept it the way I will, but I still do it anyway. Okay. And and bring the sense of, you know, peace to her when we speak. So I think it's a me thing and I had to speak to God about that as well. I mean, my family can only say, oh, you know, she converted to Christianity, but they can't say I'm rude or I'm a bad person or I don't care about them. Or they, so they can't say anything like that. The only thing that they can say is that I've converted. But the thing is, it's made me who I am today. It's made me a better person. There's so much truth in Jesus Christ. It is the best feeling to know that I can abide in him. It's the best feeling ever to know that he's not going to ever leave me. That he's going to always He's always going to be there for me. He's always going to watch over me. He's in my heart. Amen. He's he's, he's always with me. So for me, it's like nothing else can change that. Malika, do you believe that if you'd heard 
about salvation in any other way, it would have had the same effect on you? Or do you feel like it had to be this way? No, it had to be this way. Yeah. God knows us so, so, so well. Even mm-hmm. if we are in different religions, he knows his people so well that he knew that even if someone was going to come knock on the door and speak about salvation, I wasn't going to hear it. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't going to hear that. It had to be the way it had to be because Jesus knows how I think. He knows who I am. So he needed to show himself to me in order for me to believe it. I think it happens with Muslims like that in general. Mm -hmm. I've heard so many stories of Muslims who see Jesus in their dreams. And coming across yours, I was just like, I wanted to hear it firsthand from you. Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to. But it was one of those things, like as a Muslim, you... You have to know the truth and it's hearing. It's not going to, hearing, I, we don't, you know, because I mean, I had some Christian friends, but I wouldn't ask them about anything. I wouldn't ask them, oh, so what do you believe in? Since I feel like my religion is going downhill here, what do you believe in? I didn't even do that because I just knew that, I, you know, I, me, I'm a Muslim. So he shows himself. Yeah, I know that there's differences between like Muslim beliefs and Christian beliefs. They're like night and day. So how was it handling those changes when you did become a Christian? I think with knowing the Bible and, you know, what I used to believe in and now I love the Bible. I I love how it makes me feel. I love that it puts joy in my heart. I love that it's not just, you know, that you have to go and be perfect to please him. When I read the Bible, it was like, what? So there's just been a God that just loved everyone the whole time and I missed out on all the love. It's one of those things where I, it was, it was you know what? I was just grateful that I got it when I got it. You yeah. Know? I'm grateful when I got it. I got it the right time. The Quran is a lot of portions that feel somewhat similar to what the Bible feels like. But when it comes to the New Testament, it, things change so yeah no it felt a little bit similar but there was things in the quran obviously that i didn't agree with the bible the bible put so much joy in my heart i mean it's changed how i see things how i see people you know how i overcome things with the word because i know i am a child of god so if i can just do that and just be with him and understand him and understand his word and know that who I am in him, that's the most important thing. I think that's how we get through, that's how we get through life. That's how you get to love people. That's how you get to forgive people, you know. The forgiveness part was also a big thing. So Jesus has changed my life completely in almost every aspect, how I, you know, raise my kids. It's one of those things where I can't look at life any other different way than looking at it through Jesus Christ. Malika, you have such an amazing testimony. Thank you so much for sharing it here. It was such a blessing. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Our guest, Malika, was such a joy to have on. And guys, if you enjoyed listening to her story, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this video. I'll see you next time.